So thank you so much uh, to those of you that have commented on the last video actually. It's been quite helpful about what to really do about catching these parts. I, it's first thing in the morning at the moment, I've got my bowl of porridge, probably not, possibly the wettest bowl of porridge I've done in a while. I'm hoping I'm not gonna spill this while I'm like operating with too many hands. So uh, come downstairs and I'll show you what I run last night. Let's go backwards for these doors. So, let's flip this round. So this is what we've got from last night. This is, uh, so we're running spike rods. Um, so these are 250 mil long. The longest part we've run on the lathe is 300 mil long, uh, which can't, can't catch it. I'd like, do you know, this is the thing, is I think to myself, one of these days, what I'd like to do is modify this, make it until it's 300 mil long, make this dip over 300 mil long, and then catch them out of there. But that's what we get, we get this massive pile of rods. This, 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 um, these parts are okay. You know, like this isn't actually that hard to, to get the parts, pull them out, I can check them with my uh, thread gauges. I still haven't sorted through these. Uh, Liam's coming in today, he's back. He's, he, was eight, he turned 18 last week, he took off, uh, Took off uh, a week and a half or a week. Um, fair play to him. Um, so it's just it's just been me running the machine. Um, so yeah. So I'm just uh, putting in my little wine rack holder. Shame it's not a bottle of wine. But that's uh, that's the little holder we've come up with more recently for these. I used to use these holders, which the um, the rod sits in like that. That works okay. But the problem is when it gets all loaded up, this gets pretty unstable. So this this option is a bit more stable. So yeah, that's that's uh that's what we've got at the minute. So it is a difficult one. So what we're saying about those thumb wheels, essentially, I can show you this. You see that little bit of engraving on there? Well that is done in the subspindle here, engraved, and then its last thing it does is brings the parts catcher out, this moves forward and spits it out. But amazingly, the pressure that sits on that thread seals, and there's, there's coolant pressure, the coolant comes in from the back of the chuck obviously blow chips out, and uh, it spits this out. So sometimes it misses this, but most of the time actually it does land in here, and what we've got is like a gap between here and the door, and also inside here, let's flip it around again. Inside here, there's like a little ledge. I'll just bring it over this way so maybe we can see. So everything's not falling down into the catcher, instead, it almost has to go up a hill. And I think that's a bit of a design flaw myself. Oh, yeah, have you seen our little keep on metrics on there? Look, I don't mind. Uh, how many more parts? Well, I haven't, I haven't actually gauged them yet, but go on, I'll put them in. One. Two, two, three rods. Three, three rods, and that goes up in our metric screen upstairs. I'll show you that actually. This is our little metric screen upstairs. Um, the tablet that's downstairs was off there yesterday because I had to 3D print a new bracket. So you see, there's like no on machining area. There's like basically nothing really logged. But I did log 20 fouled parts. That's because I was prototyping some new parts, and they come out really badly every time. <laughs> You see our powder coating, 83, 4 foul, electronics, 44, 2 foul. You can see our sales in there. And uh, what we've got, due, overdue, etc. The only reason this one's overdue is it's not been paid. So it's not been made. Yeah, it rhymes. <laughs>